Welcome to this section of the tutorial where we're going to do basic arithmetic with MATLAB. Uh, so MATLAB, first and foremost, is, is somewhat like a calculator in its most basic form. And so in the command window, we've been doing this uh, already, but you can basically just enter things to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, much like a calculator. So it's it goes almost without saying that you can just take 3 you know, plus 3, you know, and you'll get 6, you know, 5 plus 8, and you'll get 13, and so on. Uh, so to enter addition, you do it just like that. Of course, there's no limit to how many things you can add together. I can just keep adding things, you know, in one row. MATLAB has no problem doing that and giving us a final answer. So if you have a long string of calculations, no problem. Of course, you can mix addition and subtraction just like you can on most calculators, except it, it allows you to see everything in, in the same line. So 56 plus 8 is 87, minus 109, minus 1025. And of course, we're going to get a negative number here. So, of course, MATLAB knows all about positive and negative numbers. It'll it'll go ahead and compute the, the proper sign of the answer there. So that's basic addition and subtraction. Let me clear the screen. Multiplication and division work similarly. So you could say 56 times 8. The time symbol in MATLAB is not an X. It's not like that. It's a asterisk. It's the uh, shift of number 8 key. So 56 times 8, you know, 10 times 8, things like that. And of course, just like with addition and subtraction, you can string these things along. So 5 times 8, you could just keep multiplying like this. MATLAB's not going to have a problem computing the multiplication there, uh, you know, and just stringing the answer along. Now, of course, you can, you can divide things as well. So let's look at 5 divided by 7 and get an answer. 1 divided by 2 and get 0.5. Now, let me clear the screen and show you something with this. It's actually pretty important. So 1 half. 3 divided by 4, uh, let's do 2 thirds, 2 divided by 3. Um, notice that in all of these cases, when we're doing division in MATLAB, it always gives us a decimal answer, right? It always gives us a decimal answer, which is mostly what you want, usually, when you're an engineer and you're calculating something, you know, you're, you're just trying to get that decimal result, and however many digits you have in your answer is just, it's just based on the accuracy of whatever you're trying to do. But for the most part, MATLAB does not treat 1 slash 2 like this as a um, fraction. It, it, it's calculating the numeric result. So if I do something like, let me clear the screen, 1 half um, plus 1 fourth, we all know by fraction arithmetic that I can take 1 half and I can add it to 1 fourth and I can get a fraction as an answer. But MATLAB's not going to do that. It's going to, it's going to just do 0 0.75. It's going to compute the decimal result. I'm going to show you in a couple of sections how to use MATLAB to force it to give you fractional answers because sometimes you really are interested in keeping the pure fraction as an answer. But for now, just, just keep in mind that when you do something like 5 divided by 8 times 17, you're always going to get a decimal answer, even though this can be expressed in terms of a fraction. So that's just the way that's going to be. So if you need something in fractional form, just hang on tight. I'm going to get to that in a few lessons. Now, the other thing I want to show you is, of course, MATLAB understands parentheses. And you use the same parentheses that you, that you have on your keyboard. So, for instance, if I have, and it understands order of operations. So if I have um, 5 plus 6 times 7, then the way MATLAB is going to arrive at this, it's going to do 6 times 7. And then it's going to add 5 to the result. And so I'm going to get 47 like this. But if I change it, if I do 5 plus 6 times 7, I've changed things. I've included 5 plus 6 in the parentheses. That's going to be done first because it's order of operations in the parentheses. This is going to give you 11. 11 times 7 is 77. So when you use your parentheses, basically what you're doing, just like in algebra, is you're forcing whatever's inside the parentheses to come first. So it, it understands all of the rules of algebra. Um, and so on. So if you really wanted to be explicit, you could say 11 minus 17 times 34, you know, and then I could divide that by some other set of parentheses, 55 divided by 8 minus 6. Then what this is going to do is the numerator of this giant fraction here is going to be calculated first, okay, inside of here, and then the denominator will be calculated, 55 divided by 8 minus 6, according to the rules of algebra, and then those two numbers will be divided by one another. So we're forcing here, the parentheses is forcing uh, this guy uh, to be, the, the whatever's in the parentheses to be done first, and then you compute the final result. 
So that's really all I wanted to say in this section. It's a simple section, but I need to assume that you don't know any that you don't know anything at all about MATLAB. We're going to increase your skills slowly. Uh, so in this section, we've learned basically how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And we've also cautioned you that whenever you encounter, you know, something like this, that's obviously uh, can be expressed as a fractional answer. MATLAB doesn't do that. It, it, it defaults to the to the method of just basically giving you a decimal answer. And that's, I think, why it's used so much for engineers. It's mostly, it's strong suit is in the numerics. So whenever you calculate complicated things, you usually are going to get a decimal answer. And however many decimal points you choose to keep in your final answer is just up to how ac however accurate you think your, your calculation should be. So go off and practice with it. Play around with the parentheses and just get comfortable with doing basic arithmetic in MATLAB.